So series 13, I should actually probably open this up on Cerebi because I actually didn't have that ready. I'm stupid. Give me a second. Uh, let me get Cerebi up for you guys so we can read it over together. Here we go. Series 13. So series 13, pretty controversial to say the least. Um, why are you not being pulled up? Here we go. All right. Series 13, pretty controversial to say the least. Uh, basically the whole point of series 13 is that you're now able to use an unlimited amount of restricteds and an unlimited amount of uh, mythicals. And that's pretty different from what we've seen before because if you didn't know, um, prior to this, you weren't allowed to use any mythicals and you were only allowed to use two restricted Pokemon. This is very different. Uh, it changes the entirety of the way the game gets played and a lot of people may not actually like it. So if we actually go through the ban list and such, we see um, available to National Pokedex, so you can use everything. If they have a Galar Battle Ready Mark, you're able to use it. Teams of three to six Pokemon from level one to 100. Uh, Pokemon are set to level 50. That's pretty standard considering everything. Uh, doubles, rule set, you know, four to six Pokemon, same thing. And... Duh, 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 duh. It allows for you to utilize any number of restricted legendary Pokemon in your team for the first time allows the use of mythical Pokemon. So, um, let's, let's talk about why that's significant. Mythical Pokemon have always been banned prior to this. Like, we, we've had access to them in Sword and Shield, right? But we haven't been able to use them in a competitive format because they just aren't really as available uh, as other Pokemon are. And that makes it difficult for them to, like, get utilized at all. Uh, by the wide player base, if that makes sense. How do I say it? They, some of them might be balanced for the for the metagame. Like, I think you'd be hard-pressed to find someone who thinks Zerud is a broken Pokemon for VGC. Um, but in that same vein, it's like you have things like Magirna, which is probably going to run the format. And the reason that these are in like the same category, but neither of them are allowed, isn't because Magirna is too strong. Uh, they could have always done this sort of thing if if that was the case. They could have just made it like another restricted Pokemon. It's because these Pokemon are available almost exclusively through events, with some exceptions like Keldeo, which is available if you have the Crown Tundra DLC, and uh, Deoxys, which is available if you have Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Darkrai isn't in the game. I don't know if Shaman's actually in the game, um, but actually, let's take a look at this. Ubers. Shaman's not in the game. I'm pretty sure like all the Gen 4 uh, mythicals aren't in the game, and that's like the main thing. But yeah, basically it's just they aren't widely available, which makes them difficult to have in a competitive rotation. Like it's like it, it, every po every Pokemon is able to be traded between people. Like some people might have an extra Groudon or two. Some people might have an extra Kyogre or two, which is why those version exclusives don't typically limit the competitive landscape. Um... But the main issue is that these guys, it, you're less likely to have an extra one of them. You might only have like one in total. Uh, so yeah, I know for a fact I don't have a Magirna. I have to look out for one of those. I obviously have a Keldeo and a Deoxys. I have Zerud. I have Zerud Dada. Um, I have a Melmetal and a Shiny Melmetal, so I'm able to use those guys. But there are a few, there are a few like actual Pokemon I need to look into. So yeah, I figured what we could do today is actually just take a look at these restricted Pokemon in not restricted these uh mythical pokemon and just give my initial takes on them so yeah um let me see i wish there was a list is there a list where are the mythicals here's the mythical list there we go oh wait they're not separated out that's fine why does it list them it shouldn't list them as restricted because you're allowed to use any amount of them Anyways, these are the legal mythical Pokemon. Let's go through them. Starting with Mew. Actually, let me make a box. That'll make it easier to actually discuss these guys. And then maybe we'll do like some light hypothetical team building. Do you mind scrolling back in the chat and reviewing my Series 13 team? Um, Hold on. Did you... Give me a second. 
Uh... Oh, you did actually have a, a thing. We'll, we'll, we'll review it in a minute. I have it up here on my reward queue. Uh, but right now I want to stay on topic, so we'll get back to it. Okay, so staying on topic here. Um, great, now I lost my window. There it is. Let's go to VGC 2022. And this is a box, right? No, it's not a box. New box. There we go. VGC 2022. How much good stuff is in this uh, Is Pokemon on? Wait. So how much good stuff is Pokemon on with this format? Oh, I mean, it's it's a little wacky. Uh, Imo, thank you so much for uh, the... What's it called? For the sub? Thank you so much, Imo. All right. So, Mew is the... If I could actually like function today, that'd be great. I just got off of work, sorry guys. Mew, we have Jirachi. We have Celebi. I actually miss Celebi. So we're just gonna go through the list and just check them out. I'll actually move this guy. There we go. We have Victini. It feels weird that like we just skip over all of like Gen 4. That's just so wacky. Uh, we have Keldeo, Genesect. Keldeo, Genesect, uh, Deancey. <laughs> Probably like the least notable restricted or, or um, mythical that we could think of right now. It's just going to be so bad. Uh, da, 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 da. so we got DNC Volcanion. Volcanion might be kind of decent. We'll get into specifics in a second. Uh, Volcanion, and then we go to Magirna, Mars Shadow, Zara Aura. Mars Shadow, Zara Aura. Meltan and Melmetal. I'm going to review Meltan. You can't stop me from reviewing Meltan. He's good. I swear. Also, our music just stopped. Because I'm stupid. Uh, here. We'll play that. Alright. My Metal and... Zarud. That's going to be the last one. So, this is a pretty interesting bunch of Pokemon. And of course, Zarud Dada. Definitely not just like a palette swap. Definitely its own Pokemon. Uh, but yeah. Oh yeah, Meltan does trap steel types. Ooh, we're gonna use Eevee Light Meltan. All right, so let's start from the beginning. Mew, I'm glad we're getting you out of the way because Mew is actually gonna be like the most ridiculous Pokemon to predict on Team Preview, but I do have a couple ideas of how you could use Mew. Um, so, oh wow, we already have 101 viewers. People are excited to talk about this, I guess. So, Mew, uh, it gets access to every tutor in the game. So, yeah, it doesn't get Tailwind because we don't have that this gen. It doesn't get Knockoff because we don't have that tutor this gen. Um, but it gets like every tutor and every um, stupid TR, TM. Obviously, you can do stuff like transform and imprison sets, and you don't even have to commit entirely to that. Like, you would imprison and then you transform into a Pokemon and then they're completely locked. Uh, but obviously, if you're going to run that sort of set, you definitely want some kind of support, I suppose. So, like, Icy Wind would be pretty decent before you transform. Uh, if you want to use coaching, Electroweb, it gets like everything it like needs to. A generic support set is going to be very, very difficult to predict. And yeah, I mean, it, it has a lot of tools. Like literally there are so many tools that it, the combination is almost impossible to completely predict. Personally, I don't think that, um, I don't think that Mew wants to be super supportive. I think that the best way to run Mew is probably just going to be like straight up life orb stuff. And there's a reason for this. Obviously, Dynamax is still turned on. Um, so an idea I had for Mew was like, it gets access to Nasty Plot. It gets access to Hurricane. It gets uh, Meteor Beam, which you could run if you want to drop Life Orb for a Power Orb. That's good, too. Um, but it gets Meteor Beam, and it gets... Uh, what's that last move I was thinking of? Expanding Force. That's like a thing you could do, right? You Nasty Plot, you start sweeping with like Life Orb hurricane and here's the thing you can run like a timid nature and you only need we're at level 50 right yep 
You only need 149 speed, and then you're outspeeding um, Calyrex Shadow at plus one. So then you just max out your special attack and put the rest in bulk, or like actually specifically calc for that. Weedle Tonito, thank you so much for the sub. Beat up Mew, justified Keldeo. Yep, is that a thing? Is beat up a TR? Okay, that could go kind of crazy. That could go kind of crazy. If Keldeo had like a better attack stat, it's only 72. But yeah, Mew is going to be a little bit wacky. Obviously, if you want to run an offensive Mew, you can. This is like what I expect for an offensive Mew. That or like a power herb set. Um, as for other options, it gets helping hand. It gets like everything short of follow me. Uh, it gets helping hand. It gets coaching. It gets icy wind and electroweb for like speed control. Baton pass probably isn't going to be that good. Darkest Lair, it could be interesting if you want to run like a sword stance set. Big tears could be cool, but obviously, you know, you're not prankster, so it's not as useful as like a Grim Snarl would be. Iron Defense Body Press is a thing that you could do. That is like a combination that you could run here. But yeah, it's literally so many combinations that it's impossible to predict. So if you see a Mew on lead, just like cry. You're going to want to cry. I, I, Mew might be good. Mew might not be. I'm thinking it's going to be mid tier. That's pretty much it, though. Mew is going to be about as mid as possible. Does get will o -Wisp, though. Oh, wait, hold on. Let's let's build like a hypothetical defensive Mew. Obviously, you want leftovers or you could run like a dark berry if you wanted to. I think that's Culver, right? And you could run uh, Will-O-Wisp, Helping Hand, Icy Wind. It, it's it, all right. Listen, guys, hold up. All right. If if Mew is anything, it we'll call it this. This would be like my name for it, Incineroar Infinite. This is Incineroar Infinite Edition. Because you literally get every tool you want. But you have to like handcraft the set for it to be so it even gets pollen puff, guys. It gets healing moves. It gets healing moves. Yeah, but no. If you were to run this, you would want to like you would want to speed creep a little bit. Um, I would say you want to outspeed stuff like Kyogre. And I think Kyogre with like a timid nature is what? I always forget. I always forget the base 90 numbers. 156. So you would want to hit like 157. Oops. It's that way you can outspeed it, right? So like 157. Max out your HP. You could go like max special defense. Or you would want to like creep specifically for certain things. Who knows what set you would run. Over Pollen Puff, you could run Snarl. Yeah, like this This is disgusting. Like this could actually be really gross. Mew is going to be hard to predict. I, I honestly can't even say much beyond that. Mew is going to be difficult to predict in general. So yeah, uh, Mew has infinite potential, thus making it instant or infinite. Celebi, uh, we have a restricted Pokemon that outright beats Gastrodon, so that's pretty interesting. Well, not really. I think Celebi is sort of interesting. I don't think it's going to be that good. Obviously, it hates the existence of Max Airstream. Do you get Thunder Wave? Good, you're going to be viable. Cool, you get Thunder Wave. Uh, Celebi almost feels like a worse Mew. It gets a lot of the same tools that Mew would want to run, uh, but does it worse? Does it get Swords Dance? If you want to be like a counter Rillaboom, <laughs> you do like Grassy Glide stuff. I don't recommend that, but yeah, I think I think Celebi is going to be hard to find a reason to do it. Anyone in chat, anyone in chat know what like this could be? Because honestly, I think it doesn't do much better than anything else. You could do like U-Turn, but Mew could do that too with a better typing. Like the grass typing seriously holds it down in any department other than one shot and Gastrodon. So I, I honestly don't recommend Celebi. If it's your favorite Pokemon, you'll find a way to run it. Check it out. Here's here's how you here's how you use uh here's how you use Celebi. This is this is Celebi, you ready? It's gonna be the Mew set, but worse, because it doesn't have speed boosts. Check it out. It's the Mew set, but worse, because you have to run Giga Drain over um Hurricane. But you do beat Charizard, and that's kinda cool. Then again, the Mew beats Charizard too. So yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be mid. Okay. Now hear me out. Baton Pass? Mew gets Baton Pass too. Mew still gets Baton Pass. Parish Song? Does it get Parish Song? Yeah, I guess you could like Parish Trap with it, but it isn't going to wall out much, especially since Incineroar is definitely going to stick around. Like Incineroar isn't going away, guys. Let's, let's be honest. All right, Jirachi. This thing is going to be annoying as hell to face. However... It's not as good as you think because we have Dynamax and ways to slow it down. Literally. Oh, it doesn't get Rock Slide. Okay, that's fine. It lost Iron Head this gen, if I remember. No, it keeps Iron Head. It lost Iron Head in 
VDSP, if that's where it lost it. Uh, you'd want to run like Iron Head for possible flinches. Um, I forgot, is Heart Stamp? Yeah, Heart Stamp's like an exclusive move from an event. Um, it's Ice Punch, I guess that's kind of cool. You don't even really want to run the Choice Scarf on most sets, if we're being honest. I guess I guess you could use this as like a semi Zacian flinch machine, since Zacian can't actually protect versus it, or a Dynamax to block the flinch chance. But yeah, um, a lot of these like I, I I refer to them as like the Pixie Pokemon. They're they're going to be more or less the same, but like worse. Jirachi's main thing that lets it stand apart is the Serene Grace thing. So I guess you could run like Ice Punch, Iron Head. Um, what else does he get? Trick Room could be interesting. Doom Desire not ideal in VGC to be honest uh it, it, there's there's options right but it feels like it doesn't do anything better than like other restricted steel types would and other like restricted psychic types but it does have options it, it's it's more or less the same thing yeah i guess you could do like body slam or thunder wave like if you want to be like super annoying let, let me let me make like let me make my annoying jirachi set ready this is gonna be my annoying jirachi set Ten percent chance to to freeze is body slam thirty. I guess you would run body slam over that, or you could run thunder punch. Either one, but body slam's better for the sixty percent chance. Um, you don't even need to run jolly to be honest. You could you could actually run adamant if you wanted to. But yeah, I mean like you just want to make sure you outspeed like Regieleki if it's at minus two, I guess, if you would want to, like, Iron Head flinch it, if you, like, scary face it. Yeah, you basically just need, like, speed and HP, and then you're just, like, an Assault Vest Pokemon. It's it's going to be annoying, but, like, it's not going to be great. But, yeah. Healing Wish is all right, kind of. Healing Wish is not all right, if I'm being honest. Healing Wish is a move that other Pokemon have access to in BGC and has almost never seen usage. And it's mainly because it's, it's almost not worth running it in most situations it because it, it, it's like yeah you're you're fainting a pokemon to heal another pokemon but it, there's no guarantee that that next pokemon's gonna be like any any use in that specific matchup it, it's it's hard right you would rather run a good pokemon that doesn't need to heal a pokemon in the back than like you want to use what's there right you want to use the pokemon in front of you and hope that it's good in a situation and not have that Pokemon basically be like a get out of jail free button for a worse Pokemon at the sacrifice of its own life. In VGC, like, Memento is only good in like very situational stuff, like if you're trying to like get up a Trick Room by preventing like a KO, and that's like it. Like that's the only time like Memento is super useful. Because losing a piece to switch in on things, to just stall out like turns, like having a Pokemon is always better than not having a Pokemon. And there are very, very few exceptions to that. And I don't know how else to like vocalize that that's why healing wish doesn't really see any usage so yeah i think jirachi is like pretty low tier now victini victini make me feel a little weird uh scarf is 100 percent gonna be like the best item on this guy uh, and that's because you want to go for v creates this guy is gonna be absurd next to groudon let me point something out here right victory star accuracy multiplied by 1.1 groudon sets up the sun so your v create hurts real real bad right and then the victory star 85 accuracy that's like 92 percent accurate precipice blades that's a groudon's like like listen like that, that's a groudon's like dreams right there like it, it wants that more than anything if you put a wide lens on it all of a sudden you're like what is that that's like 101 percent with the victory star attached onto it not super worth it but yeah um you would want to run like an Assault Vest Groudon or like a Swords Dance Groudon with like Victory Star Victini. Not to mention, all these guys are also like Dynamax targets. I don't think Victini wants to Dynamax most of the time, but it gets such good tools. Once again, it hits that like base 100 speed tier. So if you're going to Choice Scarf it, give it 149. Max out this HP and like dump the rest and like attack. Uh, because you can run like V Create, uh, Final Gambit is going to be absurdly good on it if you want to go for like Trick Room setups. And also if you want to go for like. Victini plus Magirna stuff, which we'll get into in a second. We'll get into that in a second. And yeah, obviously Victini does well on, on Groudon teams because not only is it increasing the accuracy of like Groudon's Precious Blades, but also next to a Venusaur, all of a sudden your sleep powders are becoming like 88% accurate, I think. Something like that. 85? I don't know. 75 times something. It's it's going to be like 80 something. Uh, so yeah, 
That's really good. Other tools, again, I wish it still got like Bolt Strike and those like super cool exclusive moves, but it doesn't and that's kind of sad. Uh, but it does get other notable tools. Wild Charge is going to be decent into Kyogre's. Um, and I guess like your last move, you could run U-Turn, you could run Shadow Ball. Actually, I could actually see that being a thing. Like if you run a Naive Nature, let's go with Naive. And we max that out. How much special attack is necessary to KO a Calyrex Shadow? With uh, Shadow Ball. Let's see. Shadow Ball. Uh, that's actually a decent amount. Maybe maybe don't run that. V-Crate probably does more, but if you got to lock yourself into something, you might as well. Does V-Crate do more? I'd, I'd imagine V-Create kind of does more. V-Create. It does more. How? This move's absurd. It's doing 80... Listen, a times four super effective move is doing less than... Like, even if we max out that special attack, right? Even if we have, like, the same stat, V-Create still does marginally more. Than, than a times for a super effective move. And V-Create is neutral. It's just base 180 power. This move is going to be crazy. Obviously, it comes at a huge drawback. The next turn, your speed is decreased by one, but that's also why you want to run that Choice Scarf because it's basically two V-Creates in most situations. So yeah, you could also like speed creep to always outspeed like Groudon, even at like minus one. How much does V-Create do to Groudon in the sun? I want to see that. What's, what's our attack stat that we're running on this hypothetical spread? 132. 132 attack. Right on. Let's go with the Picolytic set. Yeah. You create. Um, that's in the sun. Doesn't do nearly as much as I thought it would, to be honest. That's still a lot, though. That's still quite a bit. What if your max attack? That's a lot. That is that is a notable amount. Music's not copyrighted, right? No, it's not. Okay, good. All right. Yeah. I mean, this thing's going to go crazy. I don't even need to show you guys. I, I, I don't even need to show you guys the Zashian calc, but I will. Let's just show you guys the Zashian calc. I don't think there's anything a Zashian can do to live a V-Create. Like, literally, yeah, at minus one, does that still KO? At minus one, it's still a 50% chance to KO. That's crazy. Yeah. I, I think that Victini is going to be top tier in, in, the next, in the next format, so I'm excited to use it. All right. Keldeo. A lot of you guys were pointing this one out in chat for some reason. I don't I don't see it. I don't see it being that good, to be honest. 108 speed's pretty good, I guess. Does it get Ancient Power? It doesn't. If it got Ancient Power, this actually would be a decent Charizard Pokemon. Do you get Grass Knot? Do you get any kind of Grass moves? No. Okay, Gastrodon would wipe this thing up if it weren't for the fact that Gastrodon's probably not going to be that good either. Obviously, Secret Sword's pretty cool. 85 base power damages the target based on its defense, not special defense. Trying to think of when this is going to be useful. Is this going to be a YouTube video tomorrow? Probably. Probably going to be a YouTube video tomorrow if you missed the first part of it. Um, wrong form of Keldeo. Does it matter? How? What changes? Let me see. 129, 108. One twenty nine. One. Not much changes from what I can tell. Isn't this literally the same form? Oh, secret, wait, that's Sacred Sword. Secret Sword, does it get stronger? It's still 85. It's literally the same. <laughs> it's literally the same form. It's, 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 a, it's a change that happens if you just have Secret Sword. Resolute has to have Secret Sword. Normal doesn't have to have it. Yeah, I know that much. Okay, so yeah. Keldeo, mid. Obviously, Specs Keldeo is going to be pretty okay. Um, But the speed tier is like... Speed tier is a little bit annoying, right? 108 used to be super, super good. You could like put like choice specs on it and run like the OU <laughs> the OU special you know but um it just doesn't really cut it in a format with Regieleki and other like just high speed Pokemon like Calyrex Shadow just absolutely takes a dump on this thing and Calyrex Shadow is a horse so that's a pretty substantial dump um does it get Icy Wind? it does it gets Icy Wind it gets coaching I guess coaching could be interesting but it's not super useful yeah, uh, I would say that the main niche that this thing's going to have is just going to be activating Colossal, like um, like P PBF noted in the chat. 
you're just going to be activating Colossal with it. Because it's got like a low attack stat, so it actually is like a pretty decent Colossal check. Or not check, but um, activator. I don't have much else to say about it. Genesect. I think Genesect could actually be really stupid. I think it could go stupid. This is going to be another Scarf Pokemon, to be honest, though. Um, U-turn is more or less mandatory. Uh, and it's just going to be like, it's it's going to be an annoying Pokemon to use, or to, to face. Because it's got 120 of both attacks. It's got download. So it's got Porygon 2's ability, which allows it to um, get plus one in either stat, depending on what opponents it's facing off against. So I don't know. You could do a couple of things with it. I like Choice Scarf for the fact that U-Turn's like disgusting if you like get the, that attack boost. Uh, but obviously you could run, um, what's its bug move? It gets Bug Buzz, which is really good. I would personally go with like a special attacking set, I think. I'm actually not terribly familiar with Genesect as a whole. Giga Drain doesn't seem bad depending on what's in the format. Uh, does it get Shadow Ball? It doesn't get Shadow Ball, but it does get, it does get Shadow Claw. Electrobe could be interesting if you don't want to run like a Choice Scarf, but I guess you could also afford to run it there. Uh, it obviously has the drives, right? Burn Drive, Chill Drive, Douse Drive, Shock Drive. Listen, what is it called? Techno Blast? Techno Blast is this move. It depends on whatever move you, or whatever um, item you're running. I think if you're going to run any kind of drive on this guy, it's probably going to be the Shock Drive for dealing with stuff like Eveltal. Uh, burn Drive could also be pretty decent for Zacian since you actually you actually take on Zacian pretty well. 71 HP, 95 defense. Yeah, I mean, like, the Burn Drive could be a thing. Burn Drive could be a thing versus Zacian. Um, I guess your last move is, like, Electro Ev just for speed control. May protect there. I can see this thing being pretty good. It, it's, it's really dependent. It's another one of those Pokemon that's a little bit wacky. Does anyone know how does Technoblast interact with Dynamax? I don't know how it works. Let me know. Diancie. All right. Uh, so Diancie is interesting because um, we already have Carbink. And if we just compare them. I'll note the differences. 50 HP, 150 defense, 150 special defense. 50 HP, 150 defense, 150 special defense. Can you use that 100 base special attack or attack? Yes. Do I recommend it? No. You don't even get sturdy. Carbink gets sturdy. Carbink gets sturdy, which means it can trick room on a Zacian. This thing can't. This thing gets hit times four by Zacian. Like, it's not going to work. If it had sturdy, Carbink would actually be so much better. But I guess if I had to recommend anything... Like Trick Room, Meteor Beam, Diamond Storm could be also be interesting. And like Moon Blast. Whoop. I said Moon Blast. If I could type right. There you go. This is like all I can come up with. Obviously, you could drop Meteor Beam for something else. Diamond Storm is a really good move. It gets carried hard by Diamond Storm, but it's like not useful whatsoever. Like the Pokemon as a whole. Yeah, I don't see much this thing's going to be able to do. Maybe you could do like a rock polish set. What if you run Timid? You hit 112, so you can, you can actually do something like this if you really wanted to, but I don't recommend it. Volcanion, pretty interesting Pokemon. Uh, Volcanion has a lot of things going for it. Bagirna actually can live a V Create, but it has to max and it's not gonna like it. I, I'm pretty sure it lives a V Create without maxing. All right. Oh yeah, Deoxys is available. I completely skipped Deoxys, didn't I? Is Deoxys in the game? Is this missing Deoxys? Let me see, is Deoxys? Oh, I guess Deoxys isn't in the game, is it? Or is, I, I don't know, hold on, let me see. It isn't, it's not in the game? All right, so I guess Deoxys is like the, oh hey, we we didn't include all the Gen 4, or, or all the Gen 4 mons, but also let's just throw Deoxys in there for fun. Okay, 
Anyways, Deoxys, not in the game. Steam Eruption is gonna go crazy. So this thing, if you don't know, is immune to Water Spout because of Water Absorb. It's gonna be a crazy Assault Vest Pokemon. It could also be a Scarfer, but it's probably gonna wanna be Assault Vest. It gets so many good tools. It gets so many good tools. Um, I would say that an ideal set for this guy would probably be like Steam Eruption, Heat Wave. You could also run Fire Blast if you want. Um, depending on how good Fairy types are, Sludge Bomb might be useful. Does it get any speed control? Haze could also go crazy. Actually, wait. Haze is like super good, but you can't run it with Assault Vest. Earth Power. It does get Bulldoze. I could see this being like a good Bulldoze Pokemon. Like this doesn't seem like a half bad set. This doesn't seem half bad at all. Um, as far as matchups go, it absolutely like annihilates a lot of the recent Pokemon we talked about, or a lot of like other Pokemon. Melmetal hates it. Carbink hates it. Why are you still here? <laughs> I guess I'm wrong about that. But as far as like restricteds go, it actually does well into a lot of things. Groudon does not like facing it. Um, if it has any bulk, you can probably... This thing has a lot of like general bulk. You could invest this thing to live a minus one P-Blades or like a P-Blades behind Reflect. Uh, or you could even run more speed to make sure you outspeed and go for a Steam Eruption. 30% chance to freeze, 100 base power, or 110 base power Scald. Super good. Um, nothing wants to switch in on that. Uh, Kyogre, Thunder doesn't quite bounce off you with an Assault Vest, but it also doesn't do too much damage, so that's good. I think Bulldoze is actually like a really solid item, or a really solid like move for this Pokemon, to be honest. Flashkin could be interesting. I wish you got a dark move, though. I don't think it gets a dark move. Weather Ball is not bad. This Pokemon is going to be pretty okay. It's going to be pretty okay. That's all I can say. It's, it's going to be useful. It's going to be very niche, though. Now, let's talk about my worst nightmares. Magearna. It has this ability. Magearna is going to run this format. Listen, you guys were like, I hate series 12 we have we have a broken <laughs> we have a broken fairy steel type and then series 13 rolls up looking like patrick star in that one episode where they're trying to paint mr crab's house and he goes oh what could be worse than a within a broken fairy steel type i know <laughs> two broken fairy steel types with different niches that's what's happening here anyways soul heart is busted um, it's basically beast boost, but indiscriminate. If you KO'd something, you get the soul heart boost. If something else KO'd something, you get the soul heart boost. If your Pokemon KO'd itself, you get the soul heart boost. If a Pokemon, like, down the street tripped on some stairs and it, like, didn't survive, you get the, you get the soul heart boost. One would imagine Magirna will just be eating lunch randomly and all of a sudden its floor cannon becomes as strong as the specs one. It just happens randomly. It, you don't even have to try it. But if you do want to try... There you go. There you go. Um, another thing you could do is like an explosion partner. Magirna is very partner focused, in my opinion. It wants to... Excuse me. <clears throat> it wants to trick room. It wants to be zero speed, which is going to be a pain in the butt for anyone who uh, gets their Pokemon legitimately. That's going to be a, the biggest pain about this. Um, let's just go with like a very basic set. I think that you want to do like this. You could also do leftovers, but uh, Fleur Cannon, Flash Cannon, or Steel Beam, your call. And then your last move is probably going to be like Protect. It does get Ice Beam too, but I don't think you actually want to run that. It's not terribly useful. And it's going to be a very annoying Max Mon. You could even run like Weakness Policy Magirna, and it'd be absurd. Because uh, yeah, like literally, like think about it. Every single KO is another thing. Anyways, uh, Magirna, run it with a some kind of self-destructing Pokemon get two KOs with like Choice Band Self-Destruct Snorlax, maybe Choice Band Explosion Sub Alley. Magirna's gonna live that. It's gonna get the Trick Room up and then it's gonna be the fastest Pokemon under Trick Room and have plus three special attack because it also counts the Sub Alley getting KO'd. So yeah, there's a lot of things it can do. It's gonna be busted. It probably can get KO'd by Zacian pretty effectively and Zacian actually does better into Magirna than Magirna does into Zacian in my opinion. Um... Thank you, Calyrex Ice, for being slower than Magirna. So under Trick Room, you can max Quake it. Thank you for having Unnerve to balance this thing out. Honestly, I think Magirna is going to be really good early meta and then like become just good or just very good late meta. Like we'll have answers for it. Speaking of very good, our Shadow. You know, its ability isn't as useful as you'd want it to be. However, it does get um, 
Spectral Thief. A move that steals the uh, target's boost before dealing damage. Uh, so riddle me this. Yet another Scarf Pokemon. What happens to a... Let, let's go with like Thunderous. What happens to a Defiant Thunderous? What is it? This 111 speed, I think. Yeah, so you do outspeed at plus one. What happens to a Defiant Thunderous with plus two attack and plus one speed when a Mars Shadow decides to Spectral Thief it? It gets KO'd. And then the Mars Shadow starts to run the game. Mars Shadow is going to be really interesting because um, it can come in on a Dynamax Pokemon, go for the Spectral Thief, get the KO, and then even though you're choice locked, you can Dynamax to ignore that choice lock and then become broken. It also gets pretty decent moves. You're going to want to run close combat. Uh, you're going to want to run... If you're running a Scarf set, you might as well just actually run like stuff like Rock Slide. And beyond that... Yeah, a couple cool things. Thunder Punch could be interesting for Kyogre. You can also run Stone Edge if you don't want to run Rock Slide. Uh, Ice Punch is pretty good too. It's got options. It's got options. Shadow Sneak also hits pretty hard. I'm fairly certain this might one-shot a Calyrex Shadow. Let's actually check that. Because it's a it's a pretty strong it's a pretty strong one. Go Jolly. Yeah, that's just that's just straight up a one shot. A lot of other Pokemon would not one shot, but this thing having Technician just kind of does it. Oh wait, it doesn't even have Technician yet. It doesn't even have Technician yet. With Technician, how much does this do? Oh, I guess it just built in Technician. Yeah, okay. For some reason, it said no ability, but it, it like had Technician. So yeah, 150% ma uh, minimum. But yeah, uh, Marsh Shadow, pretty interesting. Zero Aura, I quite like. I actually quite like Zero Aura. This might be a new Incineroar for me. Uh, it's got Fake Out. It's got Electroweb. It's immune to Regieleki's Electroweb and actually gains health from it. Um, it also gets a couple of really cool, useful moves. I thought it got Knock Off originally, but apparently it was just it just got that as like a, a tutor move. Gets Snarl. Gets Quick Guard. Could also be very good. Uh, Plasma Fist is obviously going to be like a must for this set. Basically, normal moves become Electric type. Let's say, hypothetically, you're facing like a Porygon Z. Porygon Z wants to max strike. You go for Plasma Fist onto that. All of a sudden, if it max struck your Zero Aura, you're completely immune. Very cool Pokemon. Very interesting. I think that it has a lot of room to be explored, but I don't quite know what it's going to do or, uh, at the beginning of the format. It also runs Scary Face. Does it get... You get Thunder Wave, right? You do get Thunder Wave. So that could also be a very good, very good move for it. Maybe you go with like uh, Plasma Fist, Thunder Wave, Quick Guard... You could also run close combat. I think that's actually like a fairly good set. Sash. Because 143 speed's faster than Dragapult, but it's slower than Zacian. So that Sash feels pretty necessary. Um, however, you might also want to run Quick Guard or Protect so you don't get KO'd. You don't get like faked out and then lose your Mon. Next, Meltan. Garbage. I guess it could do... It gets Toxic, which is really interesting. I guess if you're facing some kind of Toxic Weak Steel type, if that could possibly exist, unless you have a like Corrosion, you could Magnet pull it in. It doesn't do anything. Melmetal. Melmetal is actually pretty interesting. Um, I don't think it's going to be that good, but I think it's going to be good in certain matchups. It wants Safety Goggles. If you like doesn't work on Meltan because it evolves in Pokemon Go, so the game doesn't recognize it as a mon that can evolve. That's pretty wacky. Okay. I didn't know that. Alright, so Melmetal is good into one restricted, in my opinion, and like okay into others. But it effectively is just like a hard Calyrex Ice counter, and I'll, I'll explain that here. Uh, so Melmetal has Iron Fist, which makes it um what is this? So it, it has Iron Fist, which is a 1.2 times multiplier on its double Iron Bash, which is a 120 base power move. So that's, that's pretty strong, right? So let's go Melmetal. Let's go Calyrex Ice. Ecolytic set. And it actually doesn't have double Iron Bash programmed, if I remember. It doesn't, right? So what I do is I actually just take Thunder Punch and I make it 60 base power. Uh, or actually make it 120 because it hits twice, guaranteed. And I make it a steel move, so it recognizes that it's, that it's a punching move. We are one-shotting Calyrex Ice with a choice band. But if we turn off that choice band, pretend we're safety goggles, 
it's pretty much always going to be a one shot. Very unlikely it lives. Dynamax do pretty decent damage. Don't want to Dynamax this thing though. I don't think it's going to be a good Dynamax Pokemon. You could try it though. Obviously, Steel Spike's pretty good. Uh, but it, it's it's basically just like depending on how good Calyrex Ice is, that's how good Mel Metal is going to be. Max Quake's kind of annoying, but you do underspeed it. So yeah, this is going to be a very interesting Pokemon. I think you want to run Double Iron Bash. I think Thunder Wave actually isn't that bad on this Pokemon. Um, high Horsepower seems pretty necessary. And the last thing, does it get Curse? I wish it got Curse. I'm pretty sure it just gets like Iron Defense. You could run Body Press if you're crazy. Um, Ice Punch could also be very good if Lando uses, uh, gets a lot of usage. Rock Tomb could be interesting. But yeah, uh, it's it's going to be a weird Pokemon to, to wrap my head around. You could do Darkest Lariat and like try to live a special move. It wants to be a Trick Room Pokemon. It wants to be a Trick Room Pokemon, obviously. Uh, the good news is you don't need zero speed IV to underspeed Calyrex Ice. You can actually be just Brave Nature and you hit 48 speed and Calyrex Ice with uh, Brave Nature zero speed IVs is 49 speed. So you barely underspeed Calyrex Ice with that. So you don't need to hunt for a zero speed one, which is going to be very annoying. Zarud and Zarud Dada. Also, Dr. Dreidel. Uh, thank you so much for the Prime sub. I missed that. Hello, Mr. Boosted. Have you talked about Deoxys and which form you think will be best? We did touch on Deoxys. Deoxys is not in the game. Leaf Guard. Bad ability. Kind of good with Sun Active, though. Obviously, you're immune to burn. You don't care too much about Thunder Wave because Prankster Mons are the ones that are going to want to click it, and you're already immune to that because you're Dark type. Solar Blade seems pretty good. Jungle Healing is interesting, but Jungle Healing, honestly... It, it could be good next to Groudon, right? Because Groudon's burn bait. Groudon is burn bait. You get healed, and you also get your status cured. That could be good. I think if you're going to run anything with this guy, you want to run, like, Life Orb. Rock Slide. Uh, just, like, close combat. Also, something interesting. Actually, instead of, like, close combat or Rock Slide, you could run Growth, which is a plus two. It's a Swords Dance. Um in sun does it get swords dance it doesn't so you need to run growth so yeah that could be kind of cool with sun up i don't think it's going to be a very good pokemon other than that uh obviously by running jungle healing you're dropping darkest lariat but darkest lariat seems very very good into stuff like caloric shadow it could also be an assault vest pokemon if it's assault vest it's actually fairly decent to both uh weather duo pokemon because then you run power whip darkest lariat close combat um does it get Snarl? It better get Snarl. It does get Snarl. This could be an Incineroar, hypothetically speaking. So yeah. I mean, you just calc to outspeed Kyogre, which I think its max speed is like 149 or 150 or something. So you could do like this. And then all of a sudden it becomes like super annoying. It's like stupid like that, you know. Anyways, yeah. Zuru Dada is literally the same thing. Thunderous doesn't exist. And that's all of the mythical Pokemon. We covered all the mythical Pokemon. That took an hour. Holy crap. I don't think we're actually going to do battles today. I think we'll just do some team building.